Well, the time has definitely come. Stage 2 is starting today. Welcome, everybody, to Stage 2 here of the 2022 season of College Cod. My name is Proper. Joined with me is the ever-so-lovely Katie Befford. And Katie, we got ourselves some fantastic matchups, top 25 rankings all across the board. Today's going to be a heater. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm really excited. And I just want to say, Andy, that was such a great video. I liked your little, little sign-off. It was great. The two-finger salute always always ends up getting me because, you know, we, the, the one thing that we have always have here at the CCL is the 07. Definitely want to be seeing your support in that chat. But let's go ahead and take a look at our first matchup on the docket for today. LA Tech, the Bulldogs out of Louisiana, going to be going up against the University of Akron. Now, this one is going to be interesting to say the least. And I say very interesting, Katie, because Akron are watch, walking into this entire series still undefeated. Yeah, I mean, so here's what I look at when I see a team like that. You know, they're number 22 in the overall rankings. They're undefeated thus far. Are they going to be complacent in coming into stage two with such a, I mean, you can't do better than what you did in stage one? Or are they going to have that same drive? I think there's always an opportunity when a team is like that to maybe trip them up especially at the start of a new stage. But like you said, an 11-0 for Akron and 10-2 and out of LA Tech. These teams are looking pretty solid, especially when you look at the matchups and their score lines for each mode. Series losses at least ranked up on the EFU's website to Drury, uh, the Panthers for LA Tech, as well as SIUE Esports. They lost them both on record 0-3. They did lose a hard point to the Colonels as well. They did tie second within their pool, though, for the first stage, and that's more than good enough for the Bulldogs to be able to still place top 25 within the power rankings. But Akron, on the other hand, they are looking as dominant as ever. You can see those combined four map losses. They've lost an SND to the Wright State Raiders, Miami University of Ohio. And then their only two hard point losses were in a map five barn burner against the Buckeyes. This division as a whole, Katie, mm -hmm. is quite frankly stacked. I mean, they, this is going to pit a lot of colleges that we were all kind of looking at going forward to be able to finally combat and against each other. I mean, this is the last chance for a region to be able to showcase their strengths. You got Mavericks up in here, Muller Esports, Redbird. This one could potentially end up going the distance. The Bulldogs have progressively been getting so much better as the season has progressing out of stage one. When you take a look at this again, kind of as you noted, right? There's four map losses on the side of Akron and there's four you know, on the side of LA Tech. And there was a buy for Akron. So there's always that extra series that we kind of missed out on to see what may have happened to them there. But you can't really get a closer matchup than this. Within the rankings, they're only three separated. All of their game modes look fairly strong in comparison to one another. I mean, they look excellent in search. They look excellent in control. Dominant as you can get in hard points. So I really think that whoever is able to come out swinging first, LA Tech, are you able to get that early map on Akron, maybe shake them up, give them that fifth map loss. But at the end of the day, I mean, these two teams, I think this should be a great series, no matter who ends up winning. Let's go ahead and take a look at the Bulldogs and the roster that will be uh, surrounding ourselves going forward, even all the way to the end of the season. I'm sure of it. Frogs will be posted and spammed in chat. I'm sure Sampy, whole troll, will and seasoned will be the four players see, uh, be fielding for this LA Tech Bulldog roster. And if there's one person in particular you probably want to watch out for, Church Witch Chat will probably agree with me. It is the Sampy fella. The whole troll through a many different years for the Bulldogs, Katie, have been surrounding themselves with a lot of uh, well-balanced players. Mm -hmm. And Sampy is definitely one of those ones you want to be watching out for. Yeah, I'm excited to see him play. I mean, the whole entire lineup, it's really, how are they going to synergize together against Akron? Have they been watching the VODs? I think that's a big thing to talk about, right? When you look at these lineups, what is the effort going on behind the scenes for these teams as a whole to not only be working on their cohesiveness as a unit, but coming up with those game plans necessary to take on a team that's as good as Akron? And we'll have to wait and see how it plays out on the map. But uh, we saw LA Tech's roster, so let's take a look at what we have coming out of Akron. And uh, thank you, Andy, for helping me with the, the names here before we went live. But taking a look at the lineup, you're going to have Storm, Thieves, Bio, and Arxies. And, well, I'm not sure if you have a little to tell me about them. But, I mean, hey, they're 11-0, so they're clearly doing something right. 
Like, I'm not going to pull the bias caster card, but Bio has certainly become one of my favorite players to ever watch throughout the CCL uh, regular season so far in the 2022 season. Uh, I'll always end up talking about this as far as Vanguard is concerned. This is a game about flexes and the opportunities that the flex players can definitely offer for yourself. Whether you can rip and tear with the MP40, it definitely has its effective range. But what Bio is also able to do specifically in the search and destroys across longer maps like Vutu, you got to be watching out for Bio. And... You always, you know me, Katie. I love to talk about the instigators. Artsies will be that instigator role when we talk about the zips here of the University of Akron. The way that all four of these players are able to rely off of one another continuously will showcase in this matchup alone, whether it is a competitive five map series or it ends up being a 3 0, how well these four players out of Akron work together. Well, it seems like they've been doing a great job working together so far. And you talked about it. How are these maps going to play out? Well, first, we have to take a look at the maps that we will be seeing in this series. At least the guaranteed first three. Well, a lot of Tuscan will be one, three, and five with some Berlin and Bocage mixed in in games two and game four if we can get there. But no surprise again, Tuscan really seems to kind of be a comfort pick for a lot of teams. I mean, how could it not be, right? I mean, triple SMGs, all of the SMGs, really. I mean, there's a certain point of, it, uh, of time when you are thinking about breaking that B zone on the Tuscan control when we get there. And a lot of teams could also feel the comfort of bringing out four SMGs to be able to influence their hold because there's not really long-range gunfights that you need to take. Well, at least not long-range to the point where an MP40 won't be effective. Maybe top green to that back truck. You could probably make an argument for it, but I'm mostly looking at that Berlin search and destroy. It, we didn't end up like you know, ever really writing keys to victory, more or less. But if, if you have one, when you are looking at Louisiana Tech University for the Bulldogs, their biggest comfort has to come through of either stealing away a hard point or taking away map number two of the search to destroy. You have to be able to showcase your strengths and resilience of what you've been able to find yourself in ever since losing those matchups earlier on in stage number one and be able to take the heat against Akron, who might be who might be taking their opponents for granted in the series. Yeah, I mean, honestly, though, I, I say no one wants to go down 0-2 in a series because realistically you don't. But after what we saw last week with Oregon, where we had an absolutely incredible uh, reverse sweep out of them onto an extremely dominant team, who knows? Maybe we could get some of that extra spice this week, Andy. But I, I agree. When you look at these teams, I mean, neither one, you, you can't be giving up the hard point and the search when you're up against a team that as, as strong as Akron or Louisiana Tech. I mean, crazier things have happened, but at at the end of the day, both of these teams coming into stage two about as strong as they could ask to be. Yeah, and I mainly say that that map three is always going to be a toss up as it typically does here in Vanguard, given the simple fact that if you can hold out and you can end up slaying out, defense might be a little bit out of your reach. Again, most kills end up uh, relying for that team to be able to find the favorite side of the defense. But I mean, for University of Akron, they are very much so still undefeated on that game mode. And you look at some of their biggest deficits or their most competitive maps, Mostly comes in the way of Search and Destroy. I mean, losing those two hard points uh, to, Ohio, uh, to the Ohio State, the Buckeyes, could also be very foretelling. You bring up the VOD, that could also be talked about, or the Bulldogs to go back and take a watch, and being able to mm -hmm. kind of play against the vetoes and other processes that do lead up to this best of five series, could also be quite telling for how the Bulldogs might be able to prepare themselves to be able to maybe take a map off of the Zips. Well, yeah, and I, it's specifically when you look at control, less practice than both of the other game modes, just considering how Vanguard has played out this year. And do you have the time to take a look at how either of these teams play? Do you have the coordination with your own team to know, depending on, hey, you're going to a Tuscan, can you get the kind of communication you need to do those split pushes, to put pressure on both sides of the map. What are you going to do in those mid-round adjustments? Whatever team is better in that regard, whatever team is able to kind of take those unexpected situations, especially in things like search and destroy as well, and capitalize on them, whoever gets less flustered, I think is going to come out on top in those maps. Well, I have to see, because I mean, it's definitely a test uh, as far as teamwork and cohesion is concerned and it's something I already brought up about the zips about how their cohesion and their teamwork was uh, quite a spectacle to behold especially even the early goings of stage one you brought up the speculation and conversation specifically about Louisiana Tech about what the Bulldogs honestly look like as a pack like to be able to see what they actually offer for one another if that blind trust will be there because <laughs> if there's one thing that you definitely don't want to falter on when it comes out of control where a lot of teams do end up getting 3-0'd specifically on a Tuscan control 
is because of their teamwork and everything else in between starts to fall apart, specifically on their defensive rounds, being able to know which angles to hold, which power positions need to be looked at, where the hit's coming from in respawns, specifically trying to read where all those hits are coming from. It can be quite monotonous to say the least, but let's be candid here that if we end up going to that map four of a Bokaj, it can honestly be just as much as a toss-up. Who is frying on the day? Call of Duty Esports for as long as time remembers it can honestly be spoken about just how who is frying and which team is better <laughs> on the day. Going to be taking a, a very keen look at for these SMG lineups uh, from both of LA Tech Esports and the Akron Zips to be able to see who is going to be frying on this very specific day to be able to continue on that momentum head of steam through this entire series. Yeah, it's an extremely important factor to COD. It always has been, but difficult to quantify. How do you quantify what team is just feeling it on a day compared to another team? So we'll have to see how it plays out. But something that was interesting to me and uh, something that I actually recently talked with the Seattle Surge lineup about was how do teams go into each round? Say it's a control, say it's something like search and destroy. We talk about in-game leaders or that mid-round adjustment, and it tends to be very fluid. It really is going back to that concept of the player who is feeling particularly confident in their gameplay on that day. Are you going into a search and you're frying? Maybe you come out of a great hard point. Is there a game plan that you want to execute on? Then you let that per person lead that round if they're feeling confident in themselves. And that's something that I heard out of Pred. That's something I heard out of Accuracy. The rest of the lineup, Sib and Mac, was essentially... We don't have one specific IGL, and these teams might not either, but if there is a player who says, this is what I want to do, I'm confident in it, the whole team, if you're on board, you make it work. It's also interesting that you bring up that point, too. If you did not have the opportunity, all of you at home in Twitch chat that are uh, watching this broadcast, uh, to go over towards the EFU's website and uh, read Pally Boy's uh, picks this current week, something they actually talked about, uh, about LA Tech uh, specifically, is that they are playing confidently lately, and they have veteran leadership from Holt Troll and Will, again, returning back for the Bulldogs for yet another season, to be able to give the guidance and leadership to season in Sampy, and that's generally how they play. Because Sampy is generally their wild card, if you will, their X factor, as some may call it, that when they start making a play happen, the rest of the, the Bulldogs end up really following through on what that play might specifically be. But as we're waiting for the rest of the Zips to end up uh, formulating and populating this lobby, let's go ahead and talk about the rest of the schedule. Again, this is just match one on the day for uh, the CCL Alpha broadcast. We'll then be hopping over to the Sun Devils. ASU will be taking on the Hilltoppers out of St. Edward's University. And then the final one will end up being Westcliff, the Warriors taking on Texas Tech. That'll definitely be interesting. This is not the only stream, of course, that is happening. We also have a Bravo channel, twitch.tv forward slash college called Bravo. You'll hop over there. You'll see Susano and Rome will be directing you through Maverick Esports versus the Butler Bulldogs. We've got a very interesting matchup, considering that the Mavericks are also still undefeated. And no hopping into Oklahoma Christian versus the Oregon Ducks, some of our favorites, especially off of last week, Katie. And then you'll end up having UNM, the University of New Mexico, will be going up against the University of Texas at Austin. Everything's going to be interesting uh, the, for the simple fact that we have playoffs at the end of this stage mm -hmm. two stick. Well, yeah, in playoffs, that's where everyone has their sights set. Yes, you were able to successfully get through stage one if your team's like LA Tech and the Akron, but now you want to start stage two with a win. You want to start eyes on the prize, getting to playoffs and doing well through this stage two. So I think it's really important for these teams, for their confidence, for their momentum through the remainder of the stage as we move toward playoffs to start these first games with a win. It's not going to be great for the mental if you do great through stage one and you immediately have to eat an L in stage two. So I think all of them are going to have their eye on the prize in that regard, and they're definitely going to be focused on putting themselves in the best possible position for playoffs since they've already put themselves in the best possible position to start off stage two. The way everything is going to be formulating itself, again, everything got restructured. Top three from each individual division from the first stage ended up uh, forming out this tier one, this pool one, if you will, uh, for the second stage to solidify themselves as the top eight team. Now, those top eight teams from this tier, this pool one, if you will, those are immediately slotted into playoffs. The bottom four teams, they'd immediately go into LCQ. All of t uh, the tier two and tier three teams, they get slotted into the LCQ. But for the top four from the fourth and bottom tier, those will then qualify for the LCQ. What do I mean by LCQ? It's the last chance qualifier. Every single region has one of those bad boys. Well, they will then be solidified for the top eight teams from them for them to then be slotted into a 64-team playoff bracket at the end of this road. We'll end up seeing cross-regional uh, play until the playoffs as well. So that's where it is most important, where Katie ends up talking about you don't want to be starting off Season 2 
or stage two rather, with an L because then you're going to be almost playing against the clock itself to be able to find these W's to be able to be a top eight team. To, not, to basically not have to go into that LCQ at the end of stage two to guarantee yourself that playoff spot. It definitely a certain comfort zone I'm sure a lot of these teams and players want to be able to find themselves at. And I mean, it's really a gauntlet, right? And I think we do have the players in the lobby finally, so we should be starting here shortly. Uh, but uh, Andy, when you are in a slog like this, right? When you have stage one, stage two, playoff, 64 person, bra there's so much left to do. How do you keep yourself from getting overwhelmed by just how far you have left in this journey? Well, we always end up talking about this, and this is actually a point that we brought up when we were casting over the Ducks last week as well. It's a one map at a time type beat, uh, and when you are looking at it for Stage 2 as the gauntlet, as you had uh, coined it to be, going up against these top teams, uh, for example, with Mavericks, Redbird, Butler Esports, the Colonels are all formulating here inside of this Midwest Pool A uh, type division. You have to take it one series at a time. And even take it from a perspective of the Louisiana Tech Bulldogs, Say you get absolutely milliwopped in this first matchup versus Akron, you shouldn't be too upset about it, but you do have extensive VOD then to go back and look at to be able to then go into the second series of this stage to be able to learn from your mistakes and become the better team going forward. Instead of just being one map at a time, it'll be a single series at a time to be able to uh, form yourself as a top eight team out of the second stage. Well, the second stage, it starts right now. LA Tech Esports, Akron Zips. We've got some Zips fans in chat. I know there's a poll going on to see who takes map number one, and it's going to be Tuscan kicking off the hard point. Always one of my favorite hard point maps to watch in this game. Tuscan, great for pretty much every game mode. But we'll start here with hard point as we see who's going to take it. Now, a 14 and 2 record for hard point for Akron, or 12 and 2 for LA Tech. So honestly, there's no major advantage here, I think. Both of them, a significant amount of reps, Andy, as we get started. Yeah, and the most, uh, the biggest thing to remember is for LA Tech is that they ended up losing a lot of their hard points earlier on in their stage one. They've progressively been getting a whole lot better through the opening rip, though. It will be the Zips on the favorite side. And what do I mean by that? You're going to have a little, a little bit of better head glitches <laughs> to be able to take a look at P1, of which Bio. Storm and Thieves, they collect three kills in quick succession. They find themselves on the hill early. No surprise playing out for P1, as you would expect, a standard start that you're going to have Zips getting onto that point, gaining control initially. Thieves, a nice prone position, waits for the challenge, pushes forward instead, and works his way into church to try and get some pressure into the back. This could actually be a big moment if he can get some shots into the back, able to connect with a couple, but doesn't earn himself a kill. And this great little head glitch you see used to fantastic effect every time there's a Tuscan hardpoint. And now he's going to wait. Thieves gets one in the back, oh, make man. it two. Finally, a trade from Troll, but Bio already there and set up on the point. We'll be set up on the point, but nobody for the Zips actually put themselves in a position to be able to block those spawns. So the Bulldogs will still essentially spawn in. And once they ended up getting past the first juggernaut of Thieves, as probably one of the best head glitches that we have here in Vanguard, the next step will present itself to try to work your way down the column alleyway, of which they simply cannot. Arxies will find themselves yet another two, and the Bulldogs still struggling to break inside this close B2 hill. Yeah, they retain spawns, but really not much else at this point because the Zips, yeah, they were able to get those spawns. They weren't able to flip them out, but it doesn't seem like it's a matter too much. But finally now, LA Tech spawning in the bottom side of the map, and Zips firmly in control with 20 seconds left on the point. Will's going to see what he can get done. Can he get some desperately needed time for them? It looks like, at least for the moment, they'll get some scrap as everyone begins to scramble for P3. And so far, it's Sampy on a two streak, able to push Zips back for the time being. Sampy needs to continue to go big here. Now, they are playing with a very good head glitch on this half wall. They have some help going over by the Zig as well. Help is here, so turning scrap into initial, not the easiest thing to do, but the Bulldogs are able to sequence both two going in towards three. They're starting to zone away the rooftops while the hit comes through from Vines, and now Sips have broken right back in. It's probably one of the biggest money hills we have here on Tusk. And Thieves with a big kill on a troll who was on a four spree, so could have potentially been quite close to streaks, but he'll cut that off. And now Storm on the point as they look to lock it down, and the brief windows of opportunity for LA Tech are being slammed shut over and over again by Zips, who have a full setup now on P3. They're working for control through middle map. Will trying to scramble up onto that window, not able to find his way in, and well ends up getting taken down by Bio for his trouble. Oh, you uh, quite frankly find yourself in an uphill battle that was already steeping. 
for Bulldogs going in towards four. This is a very difficult hard point to be able to hold for yourself. A lot of the Bulldogs are actually still lagging behind, figuring out, try to hit for old time. Do we try to zone away to be able to find some rotational gunfights? And well, it's actually keeping them all isolated, and it gives Zips the opportunity to be able to work their way on the backside of those P2 spawns, more or less, on the backside of that tank. They'll be in for the initial time again, and the kill feed is still swinging their decision already past 110 points. And this just doesn't seem evenly matched at all. You have Seasoned, who's 1 in 10. Everyone else on the team, negative as well. Just not seeming to match the pace here for Zips. They have brief blips, moments where they're going to get on the board, finally able to get over 30 points. But how long is that going to last? Well, not more than about four or five seconds, as once again, Zips pushes onto the point and forces LA Tech back to their spawns with a lockdown here as 25 seconds start to tick down on this hill. And Zips, they look comfortable. They look in command. They're doing a great job of playing around each other. And LA Tech, I mean, this is just tough. How do you how do you start to mount a comeback at this point? You're down by over 100 points. I mean, perfect hard point we normally talk about when it's uh, going in towards the second or third set. But, Katie, we're not even done with our first set. We're going into the fifth and final hill of the first set. We're already starting to call for what casters mostly call for at this current point in time. And that's perfect hard point. Setting your teammates are not going to be good, but... Looking from top to bottom, uh, I mean, for as far as the KD ratio is concerned, it is quite telling for how well Zips are playing. They are finding all these isolated gunfights. Season's going to finally break through the wall. We'll take care of Bio. Uh, the reinforcements need to come through for the Bulldogs, but the issue is they're spawning all, all the way over by P3. Ultral needs to essentially find themselves a full-on kill feed. Storm will take down three themselves. By the time that the Bulldogs reinforcements finally get here, Zips are set up for the back 30. And they're doing such a great job of getting multi-kills consistently before their life is traded out. I mean, take a look. Storm on three. Thieves on three before he dies. 17 and seven. Storm working on streaks now with four just ready and waiting alongside Bio. Just pre-aimed into those doors as the final time ticks down. Troll able to get a double and get that scrap time, but it's not going to be good enough. You have to get the scrap time. You have to have the rotations as we prepare for the second set on P1. And hey, best news yet. The kill feed all blue feed all starting to glow in blue and this is now the time i mean better late than ever i guess going in towards the second set here come the bulldogs need to find themselves a convincing kill feed drop shot will not work for sampy up in the contest spot though season's gonna get the better of bio but where are your reinforcements coming from middle of the map pressure is starting to formulate itself here for the bulldogs and they're gonna be able to clean up on a handful of eliminations still ample time to battle over here on one they're having a great hill so far. The best one we've seen out of them yet. They're able to get the scrap time to succeed in locking down hill one. And they're winning these trades to lock down the hill. You'll have to deal with Thieves causing a little bit of trouble mid-map. But he hasn't really been able to push onto the point. But now the collapse comes in. Zips from the top of the map and through mid. Fall onto LA Tech. And they will be sent back to their spawn as the scrap time looks like it will go towards Zips. LA Tech forced to rotate over and start preparing for the next hard point. This is the one they had... The hill four in P1 had the spawns, but weren't actually able to lock it down for much time at all. You gotta be able to win these rotational gunfights, and you actually have a double prong hit actually coming through from Will going through radio. Can season clean up these kills? Doesn't hold the angle. I was gonna clean them up. So now the hit is starting to surface on the opposite side. The zips are forcing themselves for this hand. They're about to be over 200 points, and Sampy's gotta go big. Of course it is Sampy. Get your frogs ready because they found a very crucial two piece. Problem is, is that the battles going over in top radio are not swaying in the decision for the Bulldogs. But the spawns have flipped. Now the Bulldogs, they got to hold on. They got to hold on. And the first step in that is denying Bio, that 5 3, denying him the streak. They're able to do so. And now Sampy do what he can on a 4 speed. This could be huge to get streaks as they hold down this hill and will cross the 100 point mark, trying to chunk down on that deficit, reduce it to less than 100. It seems like they finally started to come alive as you'll have Sampy just staying on the point, getting all of that scrap time, which they will need. But Bio now in a nice position in the back at a little off angle behind the bush, able to get himself a number of kills, make it a trip now clearing out p3 for the remainder of zip to collapse 21 and 10 handful of more kills away from getting that strafing run but the issue is that bulldogs they found value in the first set being able to turn scrap into initial they did not find all of the isolated gunfights to be able to influence the early break going over towards three even will gets cut down would have been a big kill to be able to get rooftops in their favor now here come the bulldogs from a very linear hit it's going to come through from zig and from vines Bio, he's just ready and waiting. Some good trigger discipline, ensuring that he can get the good kills. And now on five, can he get the streak? He does. Perfect placement and patience pays off as Zips. 220, just 25 points away. They can win it on this hill, and it looks like that's exactly what they're trying to do. Bio, he cannot let anyone get past, and he isn't as he 
goes on a nine spree 27 and 10 looking to close it out here and can he get to 10 can he find it yeah he can just keep firing he'll come around the corner eventually yeah he'll be able to lock down more kills as he turns around to over towards p1 even shoots a little bit of extra just to let them know hey i just closed out this game damn near single-handedly arxys is getting twisted on the top of the well it doesn't even matter didn't even need the streaks it wasn't a hundred point club but the akron zips make it look easy here on the first hard point LA Tech, they had a couple of good hills in that second set, but that was about it. Take a look at Bio, 30 and 11 KD, and it really felt like a flex here at the end, let's be real. He pushed straight out of the point, straight out of that clutch spot behind that head glitch. He knew it was over, and that's the kind of confidence when you see players playing like that, you can really get a good sense of how the rest of the hard point was going, especially if you come in toward the end of it. So really a great job that we just saw out of them. And I mean, Bio looking great. So do the rest of the team. Yeah, uh, Bio is certainly that guy. I mean, you give that dude an inch, he will run a mile. It is just one of those things, again, when it comes down to what Bio has progressively done for the Zips as a whole roster, is all of that plus some more, uh, especially on a map mode like Tuscan Hardpoint, where you can end up finding yourself very influential eliminations in an isolated format. It really comes down to the clear-cut simple fact that LA Tech just simply could not win those gunfights. When they were trying to find rotational gunfights, even when they were trying to overwhelm with numbers, they were getting two-piece, three-piece at certain instances of time. And that broke their setups to be able to break inside some hills. Again, from top to bottom, it will be quite telling for how that scoreline finally resided itself. That, I mean, for the Bulldogs, they finally found themselves a certain inch of breathing room in P2 for battling for the scrap time in the first set. And then got some initial time going over towards three, but more isolated gunfights came through. Bio dropping 24 non-traded kills, 19 for Thieves, 26 and 14 overall. Everybody positive besides Arxies, but they had a minute and 46 of hardpoint inside of the hill. And even Spark comes through uh, with a little bit of conversation that his streak alone, going on 12 in a row, was more than season's total kills. 9 and 22 for the kid really struggle to get themselves inside that hard point, let alone stay alive on the rotation. I love that you pointed out Arxies, right? Yes, 15 and 22, not the greatest, but it doesn't matter. He was doing his job. You have a minute and 46 of hill time, as you pointed out, alongside Storm, who had a minute and 40. That means that your frontline thieves in bio, they are doing everything in their job description to allow you to just post up and soak up time on that hill so really your kd at that point doesn't matter because the job that you had within that hard point was done successfully a minute 46 nothing to be upset about and 250 to 111 is the result of that let's take a look now search and destroy well we're getting to berlin maybe a bit quicker <laughs> than la tech would have liked but this is where they're going to need to get that bounce back they do have a slight edge here at an eight and one overall record to akron's eight and two but we're not we're going to need to see a little bit more out of them than what we saw in that hard point yeah look and pally boy inside that article did say that this was going to go to a map five but the bulldogs were going to take it and if there's any sort of way that they might be able to get a leg up in this entire series it has to be on the berlin search and destroy that again if you're looking at this from the side of the zips, they're going to come in with the idea, especially in this search and destroy, we just absolutely rolled you all as far as gunfights are concerned. So they might try to end up doing the same exact factor through the middle of the map here on Berlin, across and taking very aggressive hits over towards the B and the A bomb site, depending on what the flavor is for their offense. But now is an opportunity for the Bulldogs to be able to punish that in unforced errors, what I like to call it, when you are playing a more defensive, more methodical type of search and destroy. And Berlin can certainly offer that. Look, and, and the fact of the matter is, University of Akron losing both the Search and Destroy to the Wright State Raiders, also to the, Mi uh, to the Miami uh, University of Ohio. That could also be a clear-cut factor that this could be a good map for the Bulldogs to be able to even up the series ahead of that control. But at the end of the day, there's no better game mode to outthink and outplay your opponents than in Search and Destroy. We always have to remember, right? Yes, that was a blowout map number one in favor of Akron, but everything shifts the momentum the pacing on the map the fact that i'm sorry you're not going to respawn guys it's not how that works in search and destroy is something that la tech can capitalize on right if you are going to play that run and gun style that was so effective for players like fees or bio when you're in that map number one that's not necessarily going to work very well for you if la tech can counter that on a map that is as big as berlin gives you a lot more space to be able to find those routes and get those call outs to your teammates so i think 
LA Tech, if you can find comfort on Berlin, you can have the call outs and you can punish that aggression. And this is a very easy map for them to tie up the map score. Also an opportunity for snipers to be able to play those long range, those longer lines of sight. You know, that methodical outthinking your opponents. You have a lot of different line of sights that can offer a lot of information, whether you are looking at that E lane to be able to watch how many players cross inside the hut, maybe uh, taking off a couple of heads along the way. Also defensively, when you're thinking about that top warehouse position, to be able to count how many players cross that upper courtyard area, to be able to read the defensive setup more or less, to understand, hey, we can have numbers over by the B hut. This is going to be quite telling to be able to see how the chemistry of Akron continuously showcase itself, and also where the Bulldogs stand uh, as far as the search and destroy is concerned. Well, we're going to figure out exactly where they stand as the map gets started. And as I say that, well, production on high says, just kidding, we're coming back to you and I, Andy, for the time being as we get everything reset up for Berlin. But I mean, I agree with you, right? Search and destroy, it's something that I've been told before when it comes to this game mode, when you're playing at the highest level, what differentiates excellent search and destroy players from good to average to mediocre is kind of this intangible it factor. You either have that ability to outthink your opponent in S and D and to make those plays and to be able to read their patterns or you don't. And I'm curious to see from both of these teams who is going to show that ability. Who is going to be able to know X player did X play three rounds ago they have never gone here i'm going to anticipate that wait get that kill maybe get the first blood who is going to know how to do that and be able to succeed in that regard and search and destroy to give their team an edge it's another one of those things right that's just that intangible quality that you find in some call of duty players that you can't find in others and there's a lot of times here in the college cod league where we see players even teams of the numbers advantage and they quite literally throw it away uh finding themselves in a 3v2 in certain instances of time and just start flying at the enemy team thinking you're like oh we're in a 3v2 let's just play the trade game and they never read like say like top right. fire top mail or even the longer line of sight that you have from up their upper courtyard looking at the dock side so it's about really showcasing your strengths and reservations as far as search and destroy is concerned just another quick shout as well this is not the only matchup that is happening here in the midwest pool a type deal it, you also can go over to twitch.tv forward slash college cod bravo where Susano and rome are taking you through the butler bulldogs going up against maverick esports again very major implications through this very first matchup that we have here in stage two to be able to see if mavericks also started off uh, as undefeated as they walked into stage number two the same kind of uh, connotation that we were talking about here with the zips and definitely want to go check out uh check out that stream as well because that matchup can very much so be a barn burner but some very interesting points uh, being brought up again as we're letting the lobby repopulate itself so we can get inside map two. So bear with us on this very long podcast as we talk more about search and destroy. <laughs> but I think that you're also going to be looking at the uh, the benefactor of whether or not the Bulldogs, because even in history, when we're talking about their veteran players like Hull Troll and Will, don't exactly try to find themselves back into a more methodical style. They'll try to continue to play towards their strengths, which in history for its own self in previous titles, dating all the way back to Modern Warfare, they like being the aggressor, but they have to be able to find themselves in a scene. They have to recognize, hey, we are not outgunning our opponents. We have to be able to put themselves in a position where they are gunning or running themselves at us to collect themselves on some easy kills. They certainly can. I mean, it's map to map, as you said, when we started this broadcast off, right? Put map one behind you. It might not have been the best, but it doesn't matter. This is a different game mode, different map. You are starting fresh, and we've seen it before, right? Maybe you struggle map number one. You come alive in map number two or three to keep the series alive. Sometimes that added pressure brings out the best in teams. So we'll see if we can get that out of LA Tech. And, well... I think we might be going to a quick little break, Andy, because some about Berlin, it's just, it's being a little pesky right now. It's not giving us what we need, guys. So we're going to go to a quick break. We appreciate your patience. When we get back, we'll have more of College Cup. We are back, LA Tech, down 0-1 to Akron Zips after a dominant map one hard point. Well, it's time to shift gears and to search and destroy. And there's already an intense contest going around the B-bomb site. Will able to get a first blood for them as they look to push on and get that bomb planted. But Bio, he's already inside the hut. You're going to have to deal with him. But it is a 1v3 as they fly in, try and take him out. Will able to get two on the round so far. And Bio bought so much time inside that hut. I mean, did have some help over there. Force out a 3v2. Bomb should be going down here. But the problem is that 
bought a lot of time for Storm to be able to put themselves in position to watch for some exits. Well, look at Thieves, <laughs> the long flank coming in as will three on the round now. But this long flank, Thieves, you're going to have to go a little faster than that, unfortunately, right? Sometimes those flanks, they just take a little too long to materialize. And in his case, well, the rest of your team is now dead. You're in a 1v3 with bomb planted, and you have to get that defuse. And, well, he's crashing through doorways. You're going to hear him a mile away, and everyone posted up, ready and waiting for the challenge. A beautiful round number one out of LA Tech. Well, like I said, I mean, the Bulldogs, they're not afraid to get aggressive going forward. And, you know, say what you will, Thieves definitely taking the longest route this side of the Mississippi to be able to try to break over in this bomb site. But it was a necessary uh, route, right? I mean, the, the very meticulous B bomb site hut post plant setup typically houses a player either inside the docks building or top warehouse with an automaton to be able to look at that planted bomb to be able to deal with players. Uh, that were trying to go for the defuse uh, countless times as Will will actually get the entire ace from that round. So we'll be going into this one on a four spree as Akron Zips come in hot for this A zone. And Will, you know he's ready and waiting. He wants to get an early streak. And well, it's Bio this time with first blood. Sampy follows it up with a double. And just like that, Bio, you're pinched between two players. He's able to get one of his own. Sampy right behind him, trying to get the shots into the back. Gets it done. That'll be three, potentially another ace for LA Tech. But no, Arxy's there to cut him down. Will, the last one alive. So what do you do? Do you play your life? You don't want to give up that streak potential. But you're also in a 1v1. Arxy's with the bomb, looking to circle back toward that A bomb site as Will just tries to get a read on where exactly he is. But now the long rotation coming in from Arx, he's a little loop-de-loop -loop as he decides, do I want to push toward B or stick with this A plant? Will slowly pushing forward, just trying to get any information on where he's going. But really, the read potentially coming in at the exact same time as Will moves his way over to that B bomb site. But maybe the play from Arx is as he waits just long enough. But it seems like Will is reading this very well. Oh, he's reading this perfectly flawlessly as it might be. I mean, Arxys is trying to play for the potential rotation and the fact to come through. But it will not matter. Will will find their fifth in a row. There are two rounds now. Now just a single elimination away from getting themselves a strafe run, which is quite influential for those B plants that we know, uh, well, at least through the previous round and from previous Berlin Search and Destroys that Louisiana Tech love to place themselves in and for. I think what you're mostly going to be looking at is how the Zips try to deal with the Bulldogs going forward because that's now two rounds where the Zips were definitely in a prime position to be able to deal with the aggression over by B defensively and in a position to be able to read the player in the small room for A. It comes up flat. So here come Louisiana Tech on an offense. Going to be looking like a B committal yet again. Arxy should be that player to be able to get information. They try to burst through this door. Will will heal it. Hear it. And well, he's just waiting for the push, waiting for the mistake and snaps onto Arxy's but not able to get it done. Cut short, just shy. And well, Bio follows it up, and that'll be a 4-2 man advantage for Zips. This is the best round they've had so far. Troll trying to get some stops in, but not able to push Arxys off that staircase until finally he gets him on the first floor and will try and take command of this building. Evens up the odds somewhat, but you're trapped among three players on the other team with that bomb. You have 45 seconds left. You're going to have to make a decision here on where exactly you want to go, and well, missing that third story jump is not going to help things. Got to make a decision quick, Andy, because you're starting to run out of time and running into the middle map. Very dangerous as he looks to try and get a pick. Bio, though, not giving him too much to work with just yet. Sampy's basically fully cleared out all of the A site, but they don't end up looking inside of the lobby where Thieves had conceded the space of the upper courtyard. That will, of course, pull Troll into a 1v3. Would need the entire ace to be able to clutch up the round. Has 14 seconds left to play. Doesn't end up seeing Storm over by the B lane, and they'll be cut down. So a wonderful read on two different fronts. Again, we always talk about the instigator role that can really exist here on Berlin. Search and Destroy defensively getting inside of the mailroom and dealing with the player up on that second story. Let alone had no idea that it was going to be Will, but taking down that one player of the Bulldogs basically meant that Louisiana Tech will not find themselves in a place where they will get any streaks, and the Zips will put themselves on the board playing nice and controlled search and destroy once they realize they had the numbers advantage as they go back towards this a bomb four player strong surely they'll check inside the small room this time around surely we'll, we'll see if it happens Arxy's there is such a crucial kill on that prior round onto will but it's thieves with the first blood the aggression onto that bomb site the fast plant comes in the fastest one really that we've seen yet the only plant now as bio follows it up with a second and once again 
Zips in the defense and the offense find themselves in a 4-2 man advantage. Will flying in, doesn't check his corner and pays the price for it. Bio and Arc sees from start to finish. A nice two rounds in a row to even up the scoreline. Like, I'm not going to really talk. A lot of these kids are better at uh, Call of Duty than I am, but that's a day one spot. When you come bursting through that front door, they're at the bottom side of the concourse. You got to check that top barrel. More often than not, there will be a lurking player waiting for you to bust through that door to be able to get that kill. But uh, again, when it came down to it, I mean, Louisiana Tech tried to go for the full-on read, saying that, hey, you know, they faltered when it came down to that A push. Let's put three players defensively more or less over by that B lane. It does not pay off as Sampy got blooded very early. Now Louisiana Tech find themselves in an offense where they're kind of slowing things up, just trying to find a lot of players, if not trying to get aggressive. But the player that's going to be pushed up further or for the zips will end up being thieves inside of that A-bomb site. If you're troll, you got to be careful, right? As you said, thieves just laying in wait, prone there, looking for the push into the door. Troll just hesitating, right? Doesn't really want to commit to this because you could almost guarantee there's at least one person in that room, but you're at risk now of falling into the trap, whereas the attacking team, you are wasting seconds on the clock. And at a certain, at a, a certain point, you're simply just going to be forced by the clock to make a move. So seasoned potentially here, if you can get a pick, that would be huge. But a stalemate right now is only beneficial to Zips as they wind down that clock now. And it's been almost 20 seconds of time LA Tech has wasted. They need to make a move. And Troll, he throws in the tack, not able to connect with anything, looks for the grenade. Some shots come through the door, but uses both of them, not able to connect. And, well, Thieves, the patience pays off. Arxies again. They get the first and second. It's all falling apart for LA Tech. Oh, man, has it fallen apart at the seams. Sampy now at a 1v4. Good lunch, have fries. Will be cut down the second that they know where he's located at. And that entire play, I mean, again, was all hindered off of trying to find the information from line of sights. A lot of that ended up coming through. I believe it was Will that was putting themselves up top third of the mailroom. Gonna play that little window uh, crest to be able to see mm -hmm. if there was anybody top fire. A great line of sight to behold for itself. But this time around, Zips don't put anybody over in top fire. They actually put their second defensive player on the back side of the lobby. When you ended up having Thieves, again, laying prone inside of the office. As Thieves now find themselves on four in a row, two kills away from the lightning strike season. Still unable to find themselves a kill. I'm sure that their EKIA might look a little bit different. But here comes another A heavy hit out of the Zips. Thieves right onto the bomb site. Sampy able to get a first blood, switches things up from the last few rounds, but Season preparing for that nade, throws it out. Unfortunately, looks like he might have <laughs> naded himself. But now Thieves will survive, takes down one in the process, whips around the corner before Season can get the trade. Bio on the board, and now Zips in a 3v2, and Season forced to back off for the time being tagged up. They know where he is. Will with a nice kill onto Thieves, an immediate trade, and Season now left all alone in a 1v2, and he won't be able to do much with it. Akron, four rounds in a row. LA Tech, whatever magic they were working in those first two rounds has disappeared. It mostly just comes down to the difference of the Zips just straight running at their opponents, trying to find those isolated gunfights, getting choked up and caught out versus now they're actually hitting things as a four player unit and checking their corners and just whittling down the bulldogs before a setup can even come through and look there's only so many places that you can end up putting yourself at they play against the line of sights that louisiana tech are more or less finding values with especially in their defensive rounds but something's got to give now sampy puts themselves up top warehouse did they see anybody cross probably not the thieves will be in here to try to deny this a push once louisiana commits to it LA Tech, they're going to need to be a bit more aggressive with this push. And unfortunately, that aggression pays off with a Thieves' first blood. Sampy and Will with the immediate trades. And Will with a nice double to give them the best man advantage they've had in the last four rounds. And a fast A plant means that Arxies is all on his own. And, well, you don't even have to get the bomb planted. LA Tech able to get it done in their ones now. And a desperately needed round on the board as they close the deficit to just one. That is the kind of aggression that is paying off for them. You definitely don't want to be going 5-2 at any Search and Destroy. I don't care what map it is. I don't care where we are, what Call of Duty it is. Search and Destroy definitely being down 5-2 puts a uh, certain amount of sweat between your hands and the controller. That's for sure. Season still on that donut watch, but even still, their team, at least collectively, when it came down towards that A push, found themselves a very crucial trade. And as you say, Will did end up finding themselves a double, actually three coming away from the round. Most importantly, you did take down Thieves. Or they could end up finding themselves any sort of streaks. Now a 3-1 hit is coming through from the Zips. Most important player of it all will be Arxies in case anybody tries to put themselves in a rotation to the backside of the warehouse. But Bio breaks out a sniper, finds two to start things off.
And that's great. He was actually watching over Fives there, right? He turns around because he sees him out of the corner of his peripheral, but Bayo is already there watching over him, secures him that plant. A beautiful play with that sniper, not something LA Tech was clearly expecting out of the zips. And well, now you got a full setup. You've got Bio positioned up in the corner. Thieves on the bomb site. Arxy's preparing for any long flank. And well, given three snipes, he gets finally taken down by Troll. But that'll be about it. Arxy's gets the final kill. And Akron answer back, bringing it to 5-3. And I really think that put them off kilter with that sniper. It really had to have, right? I mean, if your whole troll here, Arxy just suits you in the back. Like, what are you doing back here? Really set up over by the B site. What, what happened? It was a great post plan set up and a great hit altogether. You know, when we are looking at a lot of these rounds, at least what I have noticed so far is that Bio had not broken out the sniper rifle, did not mm -hmm. put themselves in a boomstick position. But again, that just talks about what I highlighted going in towards the series, the flexibility of this young Bio player from Akron Zips. Double positive now, 10 and 5 for them. Much needed every round going forward for the Bulldogs if they want to even up the series counter, going back towards their first round ways and trying to get this B zone quickly. And Arxies, you can't let him do that. The first blood snap onto Sampy, make it a double. Now complete control of the A bomb site. The rest of Zips flooding forward. Storm gets the final, and that should be about it. Will able to get one, but forced away with his life. All he has is that SMG to work with, and the bomb is stranded at the site. The other team knows it, and well, you can try and get that kill onto Arxies, but you're still playing against the clock and playing against information. And Akron. What was a little bit of a shaky start for them, they run away with it in the rest of the map. Yeah, I, I mean those first two rounds were quite good, uh, were especially clean. out of yeah out of LA Tech. I, I mean, look, we Will was feasting uh, off of a lot of those again unforced errors that I was talking about that you could probably catch the zips in, but then the zip said, "All right, here you go, hold my apple juice real quick. We'll play the methodical search and destroy. Not a problem." As they start putting themselves in very uh, pristine positions to be able to deal with a lot of these players as they were finally tried, trying to find information. Again, giving the offense and defensive players for the Bulldogs absolutely nothing as far as their setups are concerned. Nothing was too vanilla when it came down towards their setups off of those, fir uh, those first two rounds for the Zips as they continuously reposition, put themselves in different positions to be able to deal with a lot of the crosses and angles of which the Bulldogs were finding values with. And most importantly, again, Bio, again, is that guy. I'm telling you, Katie, you got to watch out for Bio on the Zips. I'll do it with the Automaton. You will do it with the Car 98K in Surge, and he'll do it with the MP40 mm -hmm. in hard points, depending on the mass for control as well. Goes double positive for them. Season almost joined the agency. It ended up going 1-7 and seven as it may end up being. But when it came down to the Bulldogs, definitely did not seem as prepared for this Berlin Search and Destroy comparatively to their Zips counterpart. But take a look. Arxy's right behind Bio, right? Down by one kill, had more damage. So those two really playing extremely effectively for the Zips. Season, unfortunately, not much of a presence on the map. And sometimes that's just how it is, right? If you get shut down, it can be very hard to regain and find success within a map. But again, I wish we could have seen that snipe play, that three-piece that we got on the side of the Zips. But it's those moments, it's those reads that a team can make that really throw someone off kilter. I think you bring out that sniper in a round when maybe you're not expecting Bios just able to, to systematically punish their team for it. So I love to see that. I think great, great adjustments from them as well based on what they saw out of LA Tech in those first two rounds. Well, we'll have to see if we have ourselves yet another Oregon Duck fiasco of what we had last week, Katie. It's going to have to be a reverse sweep if the Bulldogs want to be able to solidify this series again. This is not the only matchup that is happening. Boulder Bulldogs actually find themselves 1-0 up over Maverick Esports. It's only the second map that Mavericks have lost all year long. You'll find that at collegecod.com or twitch.tv, excuse me, forward slash collegecod bravo. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back on the other side, we'll hop into a Tuscan control. Shots on him. Siege is ready to go. That's a 2v2. They can opt for a rotation, and it looks like they will. Long flank coming in towards B. This is going to be an interesting one, Rome. Yeah, exactly. I mean, 25 seconds going to be remaining on the clock. You can see all the players from Maverick. They're rotating around back through this A site. And, I mean, they should know at this point that they're going to be heading over to that B site. And, yes, that's exactly why White Dog is going to be flying around the back. This bomb is going to be going down, though, in time. So the question is, will they be able to get a pick in time? No. Oh, my gosh. Huge. Going massive. 
That's insane. C just had the, the game awareness right there. But fortunately, he's going to get shot from the back by T-Bam. So now it's a classic 1v1. Bulldog versus T-Bam. It's going to be a bit of a dicey one because this is going to really determine the momentum of the game. T-Bam not falling for it yet. He will not go for the bomb. And you immediately see the long flank coming in from Bulldog. Very nicely done. 16 seconds left. And T-Bam's going to hop for the bomb. Looks like he's going to go for the defuse, but... Bulldog's going to be playing, waiting for that seven seconds, and oh, and he oh, still gets it. Oh, that is just a mistake coming out of Bulldog. I'm sorry. You checked the bomb at 12 seconds, and then you re-challenged at seven? Oh, man, only a few seconds later, you just looked at the bomb. You know he can't be on it. Why not check it at six? Oh, that is just so unfortunate. That is literally just search and destroy timing. you got to be more aware of the clock in the top corner. I mean, at the end of the day, just a little mystery coming out of Bulldog. He literally just checked it three seconds ago. Yeah. I, you know, personally, it's a little worrisome when you're in those 1v1s. You know that your heart's racing. But you, you just, you got, just check it, like, right at, right at like, the 6.9, you know. Don't wait for the exact moment because, gosh, man, with the TTK being what it is this year, any moment is a killing moment. Yeah, for sure. I mean, T-Bam. Fletching up majorly, now going to be getting that bomb down as well. Currently on that four spree of his own. Going to be coming out. It's Blazy. He's going to be able to pick up the big kill, and that's going to make it a 1v4 situation now for Siege. Yeah, like I said, man, this is just looking... This, that last round was just really a big momentum turner for the side of Maverick. And, well, Siege does pick up one. There's 26 seconds left, really. They're just going to start playing time here. Maverick, they can send one player, but... Looks as though Siege is going to go for it, and he does find the other. So now it's a 1v2, and, well, looks for the third, but the third's going to be able to kill him. And so Maverick now on a four-round streak, still going strong. Yeah, and, I mean, unfortunate in a big way, but, I mean, right now this squad, MNSU, looking very, very solid for sure, just trying to keep this ball rolling in this search and destroy right now. I mean, they're going to be definitely looking to tie this one up, and only two more rounds need to come through for that to happen. I mean, this squad right here, they've only dropped one map this entire season. Now make it two, and they are not trying to make it a third back-to-back. -back. That would be extremely detrimental. Yeah, I, I would not want to be that situation where you're losing, but as we head towards the dagger round of a 2-4, looking at it right now, immediately shots coming in. Bladesy, once again, nicely work with the team. That's going to be a two down immediately. And, well, while the Bulldogs did have a hope of clarity towards the beginning of this S&D, right now not looking too, too hot. Maverick Esports just playing as confident as ever. Yeah, in a major way. And, I mean, right now it's going to be Indy. It's going to be opening up that donut shop. As a matter of fact, it's Krispy Kreme, Dunkin' Donuts, Grandma Dama's. Glazed, yeah. sprinkled. Mm -hmm. you know. So many options. Got to know what's oh his my favorite. Oh, gosh. And uh, Indy. <laughs> Going to be the lone player left alive in the 1v4. Is he going to get his first kill? Yes. There you oh, go. my goodness. Was he actually shooting the tree, or were the bullets going through he it? Sh he shot the tree for a second. I, I was about I, to I say, I, th I thought the first few didn't even connect. That would have been Yeah. That, I would have cried if, if, <laughs> if he shot the tree only and then just got turned on. <laughs> yep, exactly. I, I, I was waiting for it. Yep. That, that probably would have been the worst birthday present ever right there. I think I... <laughs> I'm crying at my birthday. That's that's what's happening there. Oh, man. If branches aren't even letting you get kills, you know that the Maverick Esports squad won't know 1v4, and he's going to be dropping. And now this squad starting to get on a roll. 5-2 to two now. Maverick looking very, very good. Is Guess what? They've won five rounds in a row now. Yeah, five in a row. This is absolutely insane. Butler Bulldogs had such a great start in those first two rounds. And like I said, when that momentum was just immediately switched, the mental was out, and maybe they checked out themselves. But, hey, when you look at the side of Maverick, you have T-Bam and My Dog, Blazy, and Spur Up. All, th all, all four of these guys doing very good in their own respects, and KD's looking not too bad as well. Yeah, there's going to be a B hit, but looks like the squad is going to be ready for it. An early trade is going to be coming out. T-Bam flying oh out, making gosh. it a 2v3 situation in favor of Maverick on the offense, and that's going to be a thing of beauty. Now, the big question is, do you want to rotate or keep on playing? And it looks like the rotate game back to Welcome back. What looked to be a promising start for LA Tech going into the search and destroy on Berlin. Well, that's all it was. They got two rounds, and after that, it was pretty much six straight for the Zips, except for one more round going LA Tech's way. That'll be Zips with a dominant hard point win, a 6-3 win there on the Berlin. And, well, 
what moments I saw for LA, the opportunities for LA Tech that they could capitalize on, really not able to work their whole way through that map and got shut down pretty quickly. Yeah, they sure did. No, I mean, every single opportunity that presented itself, even on that Tuscan hardpoint, as you were saying, dominant, a speed run. It ended on P3 within the second set, 251-11. Those two rounds were promising, and even furthermore than that, the uh, five rounds in or the five round stint that we did see out from Akron definitely presented itself for a lot of different opportunities for the Bulldogs to be able to collect themselves a, a handful more to be able to get themselves a little bit more score. But now we have a worst case scenario, as I was saying, when it came down to the matchup for the Bulldogs versus the Zips, they had to be able to steal away that first hard point. If not, be able to come out and take the search and destroy outright. If it went to round 11, that's fine. Even up the series one apiece going in towards a undefeated University of Akron on control. They've only played it five times. Again, it came in around the third week or so here for CCL. But Akron, they have yet to drop a single control. On the other side for the Bulldogs, they did have that one loss. But against some other top teams, they definitely always found themselves winning when it went down to around five. Just hold on. Hold on strong. Make yourself that defensive team. Get yourself that leader's advantage going into round number five. And you might be able to get that defensive side. And the scariest thing for Bulldogs, what we've seen in those first two maps, is that the moment where they seem to get a foothold and stabilize, the Zips instantly shut that down. They'll give them maybe a hill or two on the hard point, nothing more than that. Maybe a round or two on the S&D, and then it's five in a row. And Holtro and Sampy doing what they can to open up the map early on, but trades on either side. Okay. The Zips now down by two lives, and if the Bulldogs can keep it up, this could be a very promising attacking start for them a season while well, he waits for Fee and able to get one, but Storm an immediate trade. I don't know why he had to go ahead for a slide challenge on that one, but still we'll get thwarted for that first tick of progression. Be down two lives now as we fully reset the map, but I'd love that little aggression that came through from the Bulldogs. Look, I recognize we won the battle through the middle of the map. Let's just put ourselves up on uh, top radio, work through our way through bunks, get ourselves over towards the B zone early. They do that, but again, unable to get that first tick of progress would have been more influential, but winning the returning gunfights from the respawn now they stop that clock at 52 seconds, get themselves a slight life lead as they are starting to work the tick progression there on A. First tick comes through and it'll be a triple push up through the top of the map. And well, they're all fallen. Thieves shortly thereafter. The second tick coming in and well, it looks like A is all but locked up. The Bulldogs finally able to get the foothold that they need. And now with a three life lead, they'll begin their push over toward B. But like we see in control so often, this can really be the most difficult part of the entire map. As you know, the Zips are already fully set up here and will forced to run back from spawn, but seasoned a nice initial kill. The biggest players that you got to be watching out for are Thieves and Arxies so over by Bunks and Radio. They're going to be the players that are going to be shutting down the, the pinch going forward without a player up inside of Radio, or some players are calling it top green. You're not going to be able to deal with the players off the respawn over by that back truck. Now, you did have a small moment where one of the Bulldogs players were able to get themselves over by the B zone, but again, did not have any sort of numbers to be able to get a player over by that half wall, deal with the respawns, try to whittle down the zips towards that church alleyway. Now Will is forced with a very difficult task to try to stay alive as Arxies from the Zips are trying to find uh, returning kills through the middle of the map. Now the middle of the map has gone back over for the Bulldogs, trying to uh, mount an offensive push over towards the zone. Good news, you still have a three life lead if you're Bulldogs. You try and push your way on, and that is a huge kill out of Troll. Not only do you keep Sampy alive, you're able to double stack the point and quickly work toward that first tick. Will, again, huge kills coming out of the Bulldogs to keep them in progress on this B point, and that first tick will come through. And now Akron Zip, you have to be very careful, Season, though you cannot afford to give up that life, and you don't. Thieves, though, with a double on to the point, ticks down what progress was made out of the Bulldogs and with 45 seconds left. Yes, you have the lives, but you don't necessarily have the time. But I mean, LA Tech, they've done such a good job of maintaining a life lead in Akron. You only have four respawns left. This could get very risky for them. But LA Tech, they also don't have time. You kind of have to make a play here pretty quickly. And Sampy, well, that's a great way to start. And I was about to say, they have all of those things. They don't have some of those things you also listed there, Katie. But the one thing that they did have providing for themselves was the space. The two players of Season and Will towards the back, or, or whole Troll, excuse me, are trying to continuously finesse the respawns for the Zips. Now down to just one more respawn, and the hit is successful through radio. So now the clock is stopped at 20 seconds. One more respawn for the Zips. 
I cannot stress enough how well Will has been playing this for the Bulldogs. Thieves and Storm push him off the point. Unfortunately, looks in the wrong direction, but Arpsy's with a huge double kill, and suddenly, yes, you have the numbers, but there's only eight seconds left. You might not even be able to get to the hill in time, and that's exactly what's going to happen. Will doing everything he can, but you're simply too far away to get onto the point. And what was such a beautiful opening middle and potential finish for LA Tech slips through their fingers in some major double kills and final push moments out of the zips. Yeah, and again, when you find yourself in a position like that for the Bulldogs, it, it, it's very much so hindering off the one simple fact. Look, the players over by the half ball on the backside of church, they stayed alive. When you have a position like that for Louisiana Tech, you know that the rest of the zips are going to work their way back down towards that ramp, the church alleyway, if you will. Some players also are going to resurface themselves inside of radio. If you can deal with those players who are bottlenecking themselves through those very narrow choke points, you got yourself not only a stalled out clock, but potentially to work in an offensive zone victory. Now we got ourselves a little bit of a different taste as far as an offense is concerned for the Zips. They're trying to muscle their way through the B zone. They go one for one, two for one now through the opening trades, and they'll get on this zone very early, and the stack is starting to come in. The three stack goes lightning fast already with that first tick of progress. Will and Holtro trying to do what they can, but Arxis tries to get the sneaky little corner, but well, Will finds him. Some headshots come through from him and Season means that all you're going to get is that first tick and B, but sometimes that's really all you need. If you can get that first tick on the harder point and then stack that zone A, which is what they're doing right now, it can pay off for you very well going into that final push on an attack, but the Bulldogs really kind of seeming to be a bit lost here on the defense as opposed to what they had initially in their attacking side and well zips they get two minutes now to get two ticks of progress in b despite the fact that they are down by three lives it doesn't feel like it no it really doesn't and again you, you highlighted one thing very well is that when you go over towards the b zone not only will you find success in that first tick very rarely will you be able to convert it off the opening engagements for the zips but you basically force all of the Bulldogs to try to hold the space in the middle of the map and looking more at that B zone. That gave an opportunity for the Zips to resurface over by the Ruins. Secure the A zone. And if you're the Bulldogs, you want to concede that zone and the space going forward because you don't want to be throwing away the life lead. But the issue now is that the Zips, they have full control over the north side of the map. They're trying to amount this church push to be able to get on this B zone. And really, you have one there, and Will, again, whole troll. I'm not surprised to see them consistently lighting up the kill feed. They've done a great job of trying to lock down this site, but you do have at least one in the corner. Will will find him, and Arxies take him out, send the zips back to the drawing board. And, hey, I mean, that lifely look now, 18 to 14 for the Bulldogs, and now zips in the same position here with 45 seconds left to be able to make something work on this B point. The Bulldogs might not have been able to get it done on the offense, but they're looking really good here in the final 35 seconds. But as we know, the zips, it seems like they're able to pull something out of nothing. So still more than enough time for them to make the magic happen. It's a war of attrition going forward for the Bulldogs. 25 seconds remaining. You get yourself a five-life lead. Just deal with the reinforcements. A great off-screen kill comes through from Will. They're going to fully read that Arxy's in the back. Some shots to ensue it, and whole troll will take them down. All these isolated engagements are going to be great going forward for the Bulldogs so long as they continue to find the trades and continue to hold the numbers so that way the Zips can't find the value in getting themselves on the B zone. This will be one of the final pushes coming through now. Thieves doing what he can to get onto the point. The rest of the team trying to rush through the map to get there. But, well, he'll fall and with time dwindling down. Arxies, can you make the play? Stalls it out at half a second. Well, you might be able to kill one, but if you run off the point, not, no, not going to get much more than that. Just definitely wanted to play the, tra or the kills there at the end if you are the Zips. Trying to recognize where you are is overall... Lives in the deficit is going to be meaning everything when it does amounting mm -hmm. towards that round five. Again, this is all barring unless an offensive team is able to convert one of those rounds in their favor. Will then force the uh, opposite hand for the opposing team. But with a seven life lead at the end of that one, LA Tech find themselves in a certain position, probably beckon themselves that round five defense thus far. But we'll have to see how this one plays out. Will be in middle of the map focus again for LA Tech. They found value with it in their first offense, but this time around, Bio will rip Sampy off from top fire and will immediately shift their focus over towards that A zone where trades will start ensuing. The Bulldogs are able to get that first hit. 
They're able to get the first tag, but some <laughs> maybe questionable trades in the process. Not for Sampy, oh, though, Sampy. as he gets a three spree that he makes look easy. Second tick comes in, and they're well on their way to locking down that A point season. will get them there. And now with over two minutes of time left, LA Tech looking to get an attacking round done like they couldn't in the first round. And Sampy moan his way through the middle of the map, really helped them secure that first point. Yeah, it really did. Uh, again, just willing down the numbers, the Zips uh, able to uh, showcase the one thing that they were also able to uh, showcase in their first defense. It was conceding the point, realizing, look, we're losing way too many lives in the middle of the map and over by the A zone. But now the returning gunfights are resurfacing. The Zips find themselves in a four-life lead. They have all of the land to play with from the middle of the map from north to south. And this is substantial. The Zips throughout these first two rounds really have not held on to any sort of substantial life lead, usually being at a deficit. So the fact that you're up by about three, yeah, bad news. Whole troll is, well, mowing you all down, including Thieves, who was able to get a double. Arcee's there to get the cleanups, though, and stop that push short. But the Zips... I think so far, so good for them. Now a five life lead. And if you have a post up like Bio does, able to get taken out by a will, you can start just playing this as a TDM match. Just whittling down LA Tech life by life as Thieves pushes forward into that first A point and looks to see who he can find. No one just yet as well. The rest of LA Tech are already pushed into your spawn and killing your team. Yeah, it's exactly that, right? I mean, Thieves is over there, over by the... Ruins over by you, just trying to cut down players over inside of the middle of the map, but the issue will still exist itself. Season will. They were able to find themselves over by the B zone. They kind of slipped the net a little bit, a little bit of a hole inside of the Zips defense, and they get themselves over by the B zone. Will's going to collect on that. We'll take down Bio, but they're not going to fully read that there's another player that can attest or contest from the top side of Patio. Well, they will deal with Will in kind. First stick of progress will come through over by the B zone for LA Tech. Season cannot stay alive over by that half ball, but you're able to mitigate the lies so far. What was once a six life lead for the Zips now dwindled down to three as we're probably looking at one last good hoorah for the Bulldogs to try to amount this B zone to convert for an offensive round. And they're trying to do it exactly as you said, probably one solid push left for them. And well, with RC started off with a kill on to Will, that's not good news for the Bulldogs. You're going to see Season maybe try to make a play here. We'll be able to get one in the back end, but immediate reinforcement from Bio who gets the kill. Season almost able to get it. That would have been huge to open up the backside of the map, but unfortunately gets taken out now with eight seconds left and only six lives. The Bulldogs, you're going to have to do something incredible from Will and well, not going to be able to get it done. The Zips, they hold on here on the defense, and that'll be another round going their way. And I think the big swing moment, right, was when you had Thieves just kind of somehow missing everyone in the middle of the map. And the Bulldogs were able to even up that life lead because Thieves was just lost trying to find someone in the moment he got back in the action. Well, Andy, no surprise, they take a lead. Four streak going into this round for Thieves, 20 and 16 overall, three for Bio. Could be quite influential if the opening rip again goes the way of the Zips. They'll be shifting their focus towards the middle of the map. But the most important is that Arxis is trying to take a little bit of an island route over by that well. Will be necessary to be able to find value in it, but Will's going to smoke him from the bottom side of Church. Great little top-down view from our free cam observing, and it's a great opening rip. A three for one, or four for one, excuse me, for the Bulldogs. Going forward, they are completely mowing over the Zips through this opening rip. And it's been really all defense all day for both of these teams is where they've been finding success. The Zips locking down B, though, able to get that first tick in. Very reminiscent of what we saw from them out of their prior attacking round. And Troll, though, trying to just play spoiler, do what he can. Can't quite get behind the barrel, reload in time, defend off Thieves. But Season pushing up alongside him. Will gets the shots into the back, opens up this B point for LA Tech to stabilize now and work on reducing some of that time that was put into the second tick of B. All the while, though, the Zips, constant pressure everywhere on the map, already working on that A point. The most important one is that Arxis is still existing on the backside of their spawn. They have to deal with Arxis. They're going to concede the space for now and just rely that whole troll can do the same of what Arxis is doing on the offensive side over on the backside of Church. Now you also have Thieves. Trying to assault at the same time, trying to give some help over towards this side of the map. Narxes is still finding kills back here. Four in a row now for them. As they are trying to build themselves off streaks. Now five. That'll give them one kill away from getting themselves that very influential strafing run to be able to cut down more spawns. Has a good look at number six, and they will be able to find it. There is the strafing run in the back pocket for Arxes. Is able to get the reload, and Will is just lost. Now a full pocket full of streaks. 
for Arxies as the A zone does get convert 60 seconds on the added for the zips and they are just a half a tick away from converting on the B for the second. That was huge, and you can hear it. The streak coming in immediately from Arxy just trying to clear out the point. Successfully takes out Sampi and will allow Thieves to move into a very important 1v1. Will it be able to win it over Will and get onto that point? Stop the clock and look at the control the presence Zips have throughout the B side of the map. But Troll and Sampi doing such a good job of just keeping things as scrappy as they can. But Storm, a nice... 1v1, Sampy trades it out, and it looks like LA Tech, at least for the time being, might hold on. The Zips just shy again of being able to get that second tick. Two life lead for the Bulldogs, but you have a minute and 15 for the Zips to be able to amount towards an offense, and you don't want to throw away a life just to try to... I, I take away that second tick of progress because you want to be holding on to these power positions. Ultral might find some timing on the backside of Patio. They sure will on the bio. But then you also have Arxys going back to their old methodical ways of trying to get to the backside of the spawn. They'll be cut down. Bulldogs say, no siree, not yet again. Now a life lead going all the way up to five for the Bulldogs. And the glide bomb that got called in previously for the Zips not found the value that I'm sure that they were looking for. No, I think maybe calls it in a little bit too quickly. Doesn't give the rest of the team time to set up and capitalize on the information and the kills that it's going to be able to get for them. And now Season sitting in the back, so hyper aware of Thieves trying to get, and Arxy's trying to get into that back line again. But now a number of kills allow the clock to be stopped at 35 seconds for just a second. Storm trying to hold on, watch over his teammates as they get onto the point. Bio able to get a kill, and now uh -oh. it's six to six as the kill feed is all the zips and well when you have a two stack time's gonna go real fast arxies pushes forward to stop the final push out of la tech and finally an offensive win comes through and akron they get it done in the final seconds to give themselves a nice 3-0 Look, it'll be a single life lead that the Zips were able to walk away with but most importantly is that winning the offensive round forces the hand for the bulldogs that had Ample opportunities to be able to do the same on previous offensive mm -hmm. rounds, but the issue going forward for them is that they just simply could not convert it. And, I mean, the Zips, again, just being able to flourish in the aggression, those final okay. few moments, much like how we saw in the SMD, very much so how we saw in the Tuscan Hardpoint, Katie, is that when they are pushed against the wall, when they are feeling the pressure, they absolutely thrive, and they can rely on their SMGs and their flex players to be able to make gut check calls like that, to be able to force their hand in towards those very inadvantageous positions in the backs of the spawn to be able to find themselves on a 5 spree. Arxy's going big back there for mm -hmm. such a long time. I mean, they were existing back there for like what felt like 30 to 40 seconds at that clip. That only gave themselves some streaks, didn't find value with those streaks, but then were able to dwindle down the lives, and it forced the Bulldog's hand be able to not only deal with Arxies in the back, who went 29 and 25, but basically dwindled their numbers from being able to put themselves in a position to stop the push that continuously came through from the bunks and the patio side. Well, and Storm had such a great play as well. Just that Overwatch player posted up in that window, allowing the rest of Akron to flood onto that point in that final push that they had and just stop any pushes from above with that AR watching over the spawn for LA Tech. And then, of course, you see the wraparound. Arc sees the final point as the tick comes in. And at, at that point, when you can stack two or three players on that hill, sometimes it's just going to go so quickly, Andy, that you literally don't have time to respawn and get to the point so i think akron at the very end they were able to come through despite maybe some misuse from that streak they were able to get it done in that attacking side and figure out the formula to take down the bulldogs although i have to say that control it was close they did look great i think though a missed opportunity for the bulldogs to lock down that initial opening attacking side we'll see how this all unfolded Three maps in, all in the favor of the Zips. Number one out from their pool. It came down to their Midwest region division. As a whole, they are showcasing why they are a team that you do not bat an eyelash at. Uh, 111 points were only allotted. It ended on P3 in the second set of Hills. 50 to 111, giving up the first two rounds. And then one on a long stint were the Zips through that search and destroy. 3-1 there on the Tuscan control. All they really needed was that one opportunity to be able to get themselves on that B zone to stop the clock, be able to get reinforcements into the backside of church and force their hand to be able to get themselves the numbers advantage to be able to get that stack that they always seemingly were looking for, Katie, off the opening rip for their offensives there on Tuscan. Finally paid dividends in their final offense required to start off their second stage with a 3-0 sweep. 
Yeah, I mean, they're looking great, right? Still undefeated now at 12-0. and 0, Undefeated as well in control. That was a mode that both of these teams essentially even. The Bulldogs were at 5-1. and one, But Akron, I think they were able to make those clutch plays and they had the ice when it was necessary to be able to win those ones, make those final pushes like we saw with Arcees in the back line, causing so much consternation for the Bulldogs. So I think from start to finish, Akron, they came out dominant. They were able to make the adjustments in the reads to counteract the Bulldogs and it showcased in a nice 3-0. Oh, we're going to throw things to a very short break as we set up our second match of the night. It's the number 11, ASU, going up against the number 6, St. Edwards University. The Hilltoppers are looking to start off their second stage as emphatic as what we saw out from the University of Akron. Make sure you go over towards twitch.tv forward slash college cod bravo as the Maverick Esports roster are taking themselves a lead over the Butler Bulldogs. Make sure you go wish Susano a very happy birthday as well. We'll be right back as we set up our second match of the evening. It's stage two here for College Cod.